Hello, listeners, and welcome back to Everyday Health Stories, the podcast where we explore the fascinating world of medical science through the power of storytelling. Each story draws from real life experiences with patients, highlighting their health challenges and recovery journeys while uncovering important lessons along the way. If this is your first time joining us, make sure to hit subscribe so you'll get notified of new episodes, gain access to exclusive content, and join a community that's making positive changes, one story at a time. Dr. Reddy, I wanna start with a question I think a lot of people listening can relate to. Have you ever felt tired for no reason? Or maybe you've noticed you're more forgetful than usual, like misplacing your keys or walking into a room and forgetting why you went there in the first place? Absolutely, Anna. And the truth is, most people chalk it up to stress, lack of sleep, or just getting older. But what if I told you those symptoms, fatigue, brain fog, could be early warning signs of something much more serious? Wait, are you saying that just feeling a little tired or forgetful could be a sign of an actual medical condition? Yes. And it's a condition that's affecting millions of people right now without them even knowing it. It's called fatty liver disease, and it's silently becoming one of the biggest health crises in the world today. That sounds serious, but isn't liver disease something only alcoholics get? That's one of the biggest myths out there. Today, the number one cause of liver disease isn't alcohol, it's sugar. And the worst part? Most people with fatty liver disease don't have any symptoms until the damage is already severe. Okay, I need to hear more about this. Because if you're saying this disease is spreading, but people don't even realize they have it, that sounds like a major problem. Have you ever had a patient who thought they were perfectly healthy, only to find out they had fatty liver? Oh, absolutely. Let me tell you about a patient I'll never forget. She was an executive, a runner, super health conscious. Never smoked, never drank, ran 25 miles a week. She came in for a routine checkup and just out of curiosity, asked if she could get her liver checked. No symptoms, no concerns, just curiosity. And I'm guessing this isn't a happy story. Unfortunately, no. We did a test called a fibro scan, a quick painless scan that measures liver fat and scarring. And what we found shocked her. Her liver already had stage two fibrosis, meaning significant scarring. Hold on, this is a woman who's fit, eats well, exercises regularly, and she had liver scarring? That's right. And when she asked how it happened, I told her, it's not alcohol, it's sugar. Wow. So even people who don't drink can have a liver that looks like an alcoholic's? Yes. Sugar gets processed in the liver just like alcohol does. Over time, it builds up, causes inflammation, and leads to scarring. Okay, so how big of a problem is this? Are we talking about a rare condition or is this something a lot of people have and just don't know it? Oh, this is not rare. More than one in four adults in the US has fatty liver disease right now. That's over 100 million people. And in some places, it's even worse, closer to 40% of the population. That's insane. And these are regular people, moms, dads, teenagers, just living their lives, eating what they think is normal food. Exactly. And what's even scarier, scientists now predict that fatty liver will soon be the number one reason for liver transplants. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying fatty liver is actually worse than hepatitis now? That's right. And unlike hepatitis, there's no vaccine to protect you from it. All right, Dr. Reddy, can you explain to us what actually happens inside the liver when someone develops fatty liver? Think of your liver like a storage unit. When you eat sugar, especially fructose, it doesn't just float around in your blood. Your liver has to process it. But there's a problem. It has limited space. So what does it do? It starts storing that extra sugar as fat. And I'm guessing that over time, the storage unit gets full? Yes, it does. At first, the liver just gets fatty. Then inflammation sets in. The body senses something is wrong and tries to fight it. And when that inflammation lasts too long, that's when scarring or fibrosis begins. And once that scarring spreads, that's when your liver starts to fail. So if you catch it early, you can do something about it. But if you ignore it... You could be walking around with a dying liver and have no clue. That's why this is so important. I have to say, Dr. Reddy, this is honestly scary. Millions of people walking around with a liver that's being slowly destroyed and they have no idea, no symptoms, no warning signs, just silent damage until it's too late. The liver is the only organ in the body that can take damage without making a sound. And that's why so many people ignore it. The truth is, fatty liver doesn't just stay fatty. Over time, it gets worse. Okay, let's break this down. Say someone has fatty liver. What happens if they just go on with life and do nothing about it? At first, nothing changes. 
they feel fine, but inside, their liver is struggling to keep up. Fat keeps building up, inflammation starts, and then the real danger begins, fibrosis. Okay, fibrosis sounds bad. What exactly is it? Fibrosis is when liver cells start dying and get replaced with scar tissue. The more scarring, the less your liver can do its job, filtering toxins, breaking down food, and keeping your metabolism running smoothly. And here's the worst part. You won't feel a thing until your liver is already failing. You mean to tell me that people can have a liver full of scar tissue and not even know it? Exactly. Studies show that even when 90% of the liver is scarred, people still might not have symptoms. So no pain, no nausea, no yellow skin, just nothing? Nothing. Until they reach stage 4 fibrosis, also called cirrhosis. And at that point, the damage is permanent. But here's the truly frightening part. Even at this stage, most people still only have two symptoms. Fatigue and mild memory loss. That's it. No pain, no yellow skin, nothing that screams liver failure. Just feeling a little more tired than usual and occasionally forgetting where you put your car keys. That's crazy. Fatigue and mild forgetfulness. Who doesn't experience that? I mean, everyone feels exhausted these days. And let's be honest, how many times have I walked into a room and forgotten why I was there? Exactly. That's why so many people ignore it. They assume they're just overworked, not sleeping well, or stressed. But if your liver is already 90% scarred and all you're feeling is a little more tired than usual, that means you're walking blindfolded toward a cliff. And the moment you actually feel sick, that's the moment you've already stepped off the edge. That is terrifying. It really puts things into perspective. If you wait for obvious symptoms, it might already be too late. That's right. That's why we have to catch this early, before you're standing at that edge. So at that point, the only option is a liver transplant? If you're lucky enough to get one. But here's the brutal truth. By the time most people find out their liver is failing, it's already too late. Up to 30% of people with fatty liver disease progress to serious liver damage, and many don't know it until they need a transplant. And even if you do get a liver transplant, how sure are you that the liver you're receiving is truly healthy? The donor's liver could also have fatty liver or scarring that went undetected, meaning you might be replacing one damaged liver with another that's already compromised. That is so frustrating. People should be able to catch this sooner. But the problem is, most of us don't even think about our liver until something goes wrong. Exactly. And that's why it's so critical to check your liver before you have symptoms. Because if you wait until you feel something, chances are the damage is already done. Okay, so if we can't rely on symptoms, then how does someone actually find out if their liver is in trouble? That's the most important question, Anna. The answer? You have to test for it directly. But here's the problem. Not all tests are good at detecting fatty liver and fibrosis. Let's go through them. All right, first up, blood tests. This is what most people get when they go for a checkup, right? Yes. But here's the issue. Blood tests only tell part of the story. Doctors usually check liver enzymes like ALT and AST. But here's the shocking fact. Many people with severe liver scarring still have completely normal enzyme levels. In fact, up to 80% of patients with advanced fibrosis have normal liver enzymes. Wait, so you could go to your doctor, get a blood test, be told your liver is fine, but still have fibrosis? Yes. That's why relying on blood tests alone is a huge mistake. All right. What about ultrasounds? Those are common too. Ultrasounds can detect fatty liver, but they have a major limitation. They can't tell you if they're scarring. So you could get an ultrasound, be told you have fatty liver, but have no idea if it's progressing into fibrosis. So it's like checking if your car has gas, but not knowing if the engine is about to fail. Yes, that's a great way to put it. Then there's CT scans and MRIs, which can detect fat buildup, but they're expensive and not practical for routine screening. So what's left? How do you actually find out if your liver is in danger? That's where FibroScan comes in. It's a quick, painless test that checks for both liver fat and fibrosis. Unlike an ultrasound, it measures how stiff your liver is, so it can detect scarring before it becomes severe. So with FibroScan, you're not just seeing if there's fat, you're actually measuring the damage? Right. And that's why it's so important. If your FibroScan score is low, great. You can take action early. But if it's high, that's a wake-up call that your liver is already in trouble. So let me get this straight. If someone only does blood tests or an ultrasound, they might think they're fine when they're not. But if they do a FibroScan, they actually get the full picture? That's exactly right. Okay, Dr. Reddy, you've convinced me. FibroScan sounds like the best way to truly understand what's happening inside your liver. 
But I'm sure people are wondering, what exactly is this test? How does it work? Great question. Fibroscan is a non-invasive test that uses a special type of ultrasound called elastography. Think of it like a gentle tap on the liver. It sends a vibration through your liver tissue and measures how quickly that vibration travels. The speed tells us two things, how much fat is in your liver and how stiff it is. The stiffer the liver, the more scarring there is. So instead of undergoing an invasive biopsy or exposing yourself to radiation from a CT scan, you're getting a safe, quick, and painless test instead. That's right. No needles, no pain, no downtime. The whole thing takes about 10 to 15 minutes and you get your results immediately. That's amazing. So if I were to get a fiber scan today, what would my results actually tell me? Your results come in two scores, one for fat and one for fibrosis. The fat score, called CAP, controlled attenuation parameter, tells us how much fat is stored in your liver. The fibrosis score, called the liver stiffness measurement, tells us how much scarring has developed. And what kind of numbers are we talking about? How do you know if your liver is in trouble? If your fibrosis score is less than four, that's great. Your liver is healthy, with little to no scarring. But if your score is between seven and nine, that means fibrosis has already started. And if it's 12 or higher, you're in serious danger. That means advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis. Wow. So with just one simple test, you can know whether you're safe or at risk? Yes. And that's why I tell people, don't wait until you have symptoms. By the time you feel something, your liver could already be failing. And the fat score, how does that work? The fat score works on a scale from S0 to S3. If you're S0, you have no fat in your liver, which is what we want. But if you're S1, you already have mild fat buildup. Around 30% of your liver is fatty. S2 means you're between 30 and 60% fat and S3 means over 60% of your liver cells are stuffed with fat. So if someone gets an S3 score, what does that mean for them? It means they are on the fast track to fibrosis if they don't make changes, because the more fat your liver holds, the more likely it is to get inflamed and start scarring. That's crazy. And it's so simple, just a quick scan and you get all this information? Yes. And let me tell you something, when people see their numbers, they wake up. If you tell someone, you might have fatty liver, they'll say, oh, I feel fine. But when you show them their actual FibroScan score, it's like a switch flips. Suddenly they understand what's happening inside their body. That makes so much sense. So let's say someone listening right now is thinking, I need to check my liver. How do they go about getting a FibroScan? The first step is to find a clinic or specialist that offers FibroScan. Many hospitals and liver specialists now have it, but you have to ask for it because most doctors still aren't screening for fatty liver disease routinely. That's a huge takeaway. A lot of people might assume their doctor would tell them if they needed this test. But the reality is, you might have to ask for it yourself. That's right. I always say, you have to take charge of your own health, because if you wait for symptoms or wait for a doctor to bring it up, it might be too late. Dr. Reddy, this has been eye-opening. Now that we know how to check for fatty liver, the next big question is, what do you do if you have it? Can you actually reverse fatty liver and heal the liver before it's too late? Absolutely. And this is the part that excites me the most. Unlike so many other chronic diseases, fatty liver can be completely reversed. The liver is one of the most resilient organs in the body, but you have to give it the right conditions to heal. That's a relief. But I have to ask, how long does it take? If someone listening right now finds out they have fatty liver, are we talking years of recovery? Or can this be fixed quickly? That's the amazing part. I've seen people reverse their fatty liver in as little as 30 to 90 days. Of course, it depends on the severity, but if you commit to the right changes, your liver will respond. That's incredible. So what exactly does someone need to do? Reversing fatty liver comes down to three things. What you eat, when you eat, and how you reduce inflammation. Let's start with food. The first and most important step is eliminating sugar. Every time you eat sugar, especially fructose, it goes straight to your liver and gets stored as fat. If you want to reverse fatty liver, you have to stop feeding it. That means no processed sugar, no high fructose corn syrup, and cutting back on hidden sugars in things like fruit juices, flavored yogurts, and energy bars. Even things people think are healthy, like dried fruits or honey, can be a problem. They're loaded with fructose, and fructose is the number one driver of fatty liver. Wow, even honey? A lot of people probably think that's a healthy alternative. I hear that all the time. But whether it's honey, agave, or fruit juice, the liver processes them the same way as sugar. 
and sugar is what's creating this entire epidemic. So if sugar is out, what should people be eating instead? The goal is to switch to foods that support liver healing. That means healthy fats like avocados and olive oil, plenty of high-quality protein from eggs, fish, and lean meats, and low-carb vegetables like spinach, broccoli, and bell peppers. But it's not just about what you eat. It's also about when you eat. I have a feeling you're about to talk about fasting. You got it. One of the most powerful tools for reversing fatty liver is intermittent fasting. When you eat all day long, your liver never gets a break. But when you fast, your body switches from storing fat to burning it for energy. And guess where it starts pulling that fat from? The liver. I've had patients who simply change their eating window, eating all their meals within an eight-hour window and fasting for the other 16. And they saw dramatic improvements in just weeks. So it's not just about what you eat, but also giving your liver time to recover between meals? Yes, and for people with more severe fatty liver, doing a 36 to 48 hour fast once a week can work wonders. It's like hitting a reset button for your liver. That sounds intense, but I bet once people see the results, they realize how powerful it is. That's exactly what happens. And the final piece of the puzzle is reducing inflammation. Because inflammation is what turns fatty liver into fibrosis. You have to get rid of the foods that cause inflammation, processed oils, artificial ingredients, and sugar, and replace them with healing foods like turmeric, ginger, and leafy greens. Managing stress is just as important because stress raises cortisol, and cortisol drives inflammation in the liver. A combination of the right foods, fasting, and stress management is the key to reversing fatty liver before it turns into something worse. Dr. Reddy, I know you've seen some incredible transformations in your patients. Can you share a story of someone who actually reversed their fatty liver? Absolutely. One of my patients, a 55-year-old man, came in feeling exhausted all the time. His blood sugar was high, and he couldn't lose weight no matter what he did. We ran a fiber scan, and his liver was already at stage 3 fibrosis. He was on his way to cirrhosis. He was shocked. But instead of panicking, he took action. He cut out sugar completely, started intermittent fasting, and followed an anti-inflammatory diet. Three months later, we repeated his fibro scan. His liver had reversed from stage 3 back to stage 1. His energy skyrocketed, his blood sugar stabilized, and his doctor took him off his diabetes medication. It was like he got his life back. That's incredible. So fatty liver isn't a life sentence. People really can turn this around. Yes, definitely. But the key is catching it early and taking action before it's too late. Dr. Reddy, I feel like this episode could literally save lives. If someone listening right now is thinking, I need to check my liver. What should be their first step? First, get checked. Don't rely on blood tests alone. Get the full picture of what's really happening inside your liver. And what about those who already know they have fatty liver? Start today. Cut out sugar. Implement fasting. Focus on whole, anti-inflammatory foods. The liver is one of the most forgiving organs, but only if you take care of it. If you wait too long, the damage becomes irreversible. Take action now, before it's too late. Dr. Reddy, this has been one of the most alarming conversations we've had. The fact that so many people are silently living with fatty liver, completely unaware of the damage happening inside them, is truly unsettling. And knowing that it's reversible makes this information even more urgent. Thank you for sharing this. It has the power to change so many lives. That's the goal, Anna. I want people to understand that their health is in their hands. A fatty liver diagnosis isn't the end of the road but doing nothing about it could be. The good news is, your liver has the power to heal, but only if you take action now. The longer you wait, the harder it becomes to reverse the damage. And before we go, I want to remind everyone, this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. Always consult your healthcare provider for any medical concerns. Absolutely. And if you found this episode helpful, make sure to share it with someone you care about. It might just save their life. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode filled with powerful health insights just like this one. Until next time, stay healthy, stay curious, and keep listening to Everyday Health Stories. Remember, every story has the power to transform lives. Bye for now.